Kenny um, is of course one of America's greatest musical exports. Another very different star on both sides of the Atlantic is Lou Reed. But you might not know that Reed's biggest hit owes an awful lot to a few minutes of genius from a British session musician. Des Coleman has been taking a walk on the wild side. If you think of a song as a bit like the human body, you could say that it's the bass line which often forms the backbone, the central theme which all other harmonies hang off. And there's one solo that stands out for many as the mother of all bass lines. Lou Reed's Walk on the Wild Side is a bit edgy, it's a little bit dark and is as well known today as it was at the time of its release back in 1972, if not even more so. It's also unmistakably associated with New York. So why, you may ask, have I come to leafy Sussex? Well, not far from here lives the man who made that song instantly recognisable with his unforgettable bass line. said, hey, babe. Take a walk on the wild side. In the early 1970s, Herbie Flowers was a bass for hire. He made his living as a jobbing session musician. So, Herbie, tell us, what was life like for a session musician back then? Busy, because there was a, an explosion in the amount of work available for musicians. And you only need to play on a couple that become hits and you become flavour of the month. And, and Lou Reed, how did you end up working for him? David Bowie phoned me up because I've done a lot of work for him on things like Space Oddity. And Lou Reed, I think, had left Velvet Underground and David had said, why don't you come to London to do some recording? And I was booked to be at Trident Studios at 10 o'clock that Monday morning. And there was Lou in the control box. And I'd taken my double bass because I'm an old double bass player and I would always take that because I prefer playing it to the electric thing. I thought, can I do it on this? Because the song itself is dark. It, it seemed to work doing. And being an old jazzer, I thought, oh, can I try something? Yeah, of course you can. And I overdubbed the bass guitar a tenth that's ten notes above what the double bass was doing and it is quite a distinctive sound sounds stupid doesn't it but when you combine that with the other bass it takes on another character That's what you created. Well, yeah, but that's what old jazzers do. You, you put bits in. In those days, the recording rate for a three-hour session was £12. But if you overdubbed, that means layered another instrument on top, you got double the money. Not that I did it for that reason, oh. but... Said, hey, babe, take a walk on the wild side. And Lou said, go, that's gorgeous because he said it actually suited what the song was about, which was luck, because I had no idea what the song was about. And, and the session, that particular session, how long did it take? What, that? 20 minutes. So did you expect the song to be a hit, then? I think what appealed to people, why they actually liked it, is that it was played just with three or four players, like in a room, and it was very accessible. Now Herbie may be modest about his contribution, but who's to say, without that opening bass line, Walk on the Wild Side might just be another forgotten 1970s song instead of the pop legend that it is. How did Des resist the urge to then <laughs> come out singing? Surely he should have broken into song. 